Breast Implant, Wikipedia Article Audio A breast implant is a prosthesis used to change the size, shape, and contour of a woman's breast. In reconstructive plastic surgery, breast implants can be placed to restore a natural-looking breast mound for post-mastectomy breast reconstruction patients or to correct congenital defects and deformities of the chest wall. They are also used cosmetically to enhance or enlarge the appearance of the breast through breast augmentation surgery. There are three general types of breast implant devices, defined by their filler material, saline solution, silicone gel, and composite filler. The saline implant has an elastomer silicone shell filled with sterile saline solution during surgery. The silicone implant has an elastomer silicone shell pre-filled with viscous silicone gel, and the alternative composition implants featured miscellaneous fillers, such as soy oil, polypropylene string, etc. Composite implants are typically not recommended for use anymore and, in fact, their use is banned in the United States and Europe due to associated health risks and complications. History 19th century In surgical practice, for the reconstruction of a breast, the tissue expander device is a temporary breast prosthesis used to form and establish an implant pocket for the future permanent breast implant. For the correction of male breast defects and deformities, the pectoral implant is the breast prosthesis used for the reconstruction and the aesthetic repair of a man's chest wall. Since the late 19th century, breast implants have been used to surgically augment the size, modify the shape, and enhance the feel of a woman's breasts. In 1895, Surgeon Vincent Cherney effected the earliest breast implant emplacement when he used the patient's autologous adipose tissue, harvested from a benign lumbar lipoma, to repair the asymmetry of the breast from which he had removed a tumor. In 1889, Surgeon Robert Gersuni experimented with paraffin injections, with disastrous results. From the first half of the 20th century, physicians used other substances as breast implant fillers ivory, glass balls, ground rubber, ox cartilage, terry lean wool, gutta percha, dicara, polyethylene chips, ivalin, a polyethylene sack with ivalin, polyether foam sponge, polyethylene tape strips wound into a ball, polyester elastic rubber and Teflon silicone prostheses. In the mid-20th century, Morton I. Burson, in 1945, and Jacques Maliniak, in 1950, each performed flap-based breast augmentations by rotating the patient's chest wall tissue into the breast to increase its volume. Furthermore, throughout the 1950s and the 1960s, Plastic surgeons used synthetic fillers including silicone injections received by some 50,000 women, from which developed silicone granulomas and breast hardening that required treatment by mastectomy. In 1961, the American plastic surgeons Thomas Cronin and Frank Jero, and the Dow Corning Corporation, developed the first silicone breast prosthesis filled with silicone gel, in due course, the first augmentation mammoplasty was performed in 1962 using the cronin Gero implant, prosthesis model 1963. In 1964, the French company Laboratoires Arian developed and manufactured the saline breast implant, filled with saline solution and then introduced for use as a medical device in 1964. Today, there are two types of breast implants commonly used for mammoplasty, breast reconstruction, and breast augmentation procedures. The 20th Century
The saline breast implant filled with saline solution was first manufactured by the Laboratoires Arian Company in France and was introduced for use as a prosthetic medical device in 1964. The contemporary models of saline breast implant are manufactured with thicker, room temperature vulcanized shells made of a silicone elastomer. The study in vitro deflation of pre-filled saline breast implants reported that the rates of deflation of the pre-filled saline breast implant made it a second-choice prosthesis for corrective breast surgery. Nonetheless, in the 1990s, the saline breast implant was the prosthesis most common device used for breast augmentation surgery in the United States because of the U.S. FDA's restriction against the implantation of silicone-filled breast implants outside of clinical studies. Saline breast implants have enjoyed little popularity in the rest of the world, possessing negligible market share. The technical goal of saline implant technology was a physically less invasive surgical technique for emplacing an empty breast implant device through a smaller surgical incision. In surgical praxis, after having emplaced the empty breast implants to the implant pockets, the plastic surgeon then filled each device with saline solution, and, because the required insertion incisions are short and small, the resultant incision scars will be smaller and shorter than the surgical scars usual to the long incisions required for inserting pre-filled, silicone gel implants. Types When compared to the results achieved with a silicone gel breast implant, the saline implant can yield acceptable results, of increased breast size, smoother hemisphere contour, and realistic texture. Yet, it is likelier to cause cosmetic problems, such as the rippling and the wrinkling of the breast envelope skin, accelerated lower breast pole stretch, and technical problems, such as the presence of the implant being noticeable to the eye and to the touch. The occurrence of such cosmetic problems is likelier in the case of the woman with very little breast tissue and in the case of the woman who requires post-mastectomy breast reconstruction, thus, the silicone gel implant is the technically superior prosthetic device for breast augmentation, and for breast reconstruction. In the case of the woman with much breast tissue, for whom submuscular emplacement is the recommended surgical approach, Saline breast implants can produce an aesthetic result much like that afforded by silicone breast implants, albeit with greater implant palpability. As a medical device technology, there are five generations of silicone breast implant, each defined by common model manufacturing techniques. The modern prosthetic breast was invented in 1961 by the American plastic surgeons Thomas Cronin and Frank Jero, and manufactured by the Dow Corning Corporation. In due course, the first augmentation mammoplasty was performed in 1962. Saline Implants The Cronin Jero Implant, Prosthesis Model 1963 was a silicone rubber envelope sack, shaped like a teardrop, which was filled with viscous silicone gel. To reduce the rotation of the emplaced breast implant upon the chest wall, the model 1963 prosthesis was affixed to the implant pocket with a fastener patch, made of Dacron material, which was attached to the rear of the breast implant shell. Silicone Gel Implants in the 1970s, manufacturers presented the second generation of breast implant prostheses that featured functional developments and aesthetic improvements to the technology. First Generation In the 1980s, the models of the third and of the fourth generations of breast implant devices were sequential advances in manufacturing technology such as elastomer-coated shells that decreased gel bleed, and a thicker filler gel. 
Sociologically, the manufacturers of prosthetic breasts then designed and made anatomic models and shaped models that realistically corresponded with the breast and body types of women. The tapered models of breast implant have a uniformly textured surface, which reduces the rotation of the prosthesis within the implant pocket. The round models of breast implant are available in smooth surface and textured surface types. Since the mid-1990s, the fifth generation of silicone gel breast implant is made of a high-strength, highly cohesive silicone gel that mostly eliminates the occurrences of filler leakage and of the migration of the silicone filler from the implant pocket to elsewhere in the woman's body. These implants are commonly referred to as gummy bear breast implants for their firm, pliant consistency which is similar to gummy candies. The study's experience with anatomical soft cohesive silicone gel prosthesis in cosmetic and reconstructive breast implant surgery and cohesive silicone gel breast implants in aesthetic and reconstructive breast surgery reported low incidence rates of capsular contracture and of device shell rupture and greater rates of improved medical safety and technical efficacy than that of early generation breast implant devices. Second Generation The breast augmentation patient usually is a young woman whose personality profile indicates psychological distress about her personal appearance and her bodily self-image, and a history of having endured criticism about the aesthetics of her person. The study's body image concerns of breast augmentation patients and body dysmorphic disorder and cosmetic surgery reported that the woman who underwent breast augmentation surgery also had undergone psychotherapy, suffered low self-esteem, presented frequent occurrences of psychological depression, had attempted suicide, and suffered body dysmorphia, a type of mental illness. Post-operative patient surveys about mental health and quality of life, reported improved physical health, physical appearance, social life, self-confidence, self-esteem, and satisfactory sexual functioning. Furthermore, the women reported long-term satisfaction with their breast implant outcomes some despite having suffered medical complications that required surgical revision, either corrective or aesthetic. Likewise, in Denmark, 8.0% of breast augmentation patients had a preoperative history of psychiatric hospitalization. In 2008, the longitudinal study excess mortality from suicide and other external causes of death among women with cosmetic breast implants, reported that women who sought breast implants are almost 3.0 times as likely to commit suicide as are women who have not sought breast implants. Compared to the standard suicide rate for women of the general populace, the suicide rate for women with augmented breasts remained constant until 10 years post-implantation, yet, it increased to 4.5 times greater at the 11-year mark, and so remained until the 19-year mark, when it increased to 6.0 times greater at 20 years post-implantation. Moreover, additional to the suicide risk, women with breast implants also faced a trebled death risk from alcoholism and the abuse of prescription and recreational drugs. Although seven studies have statistically connected a woman's breast augmentation to a greater suicide rate, the research indicates that breast augmentation surgery does not increase the death rate, and that, in the first instance, it is the psychopathologically inclined woman who is more likely to undergo a breast augmentation procedure. The study effect of breast augmentation mammoplasty on self-esteem and sexuality, a quantitative analysis, reported that the women attributed their improved self-image, self-esteem, and increased satisfactory sexual functioning to having undergone breast augmentation. The cohort, aged 21-57 years, 
averaged post-operative self-esteem increases that ranged from 20.7 to 24.9 points on the 30-point Rosenberg self-esteem scale, which data supported the 78.6% increase in the woman's libido. Relative to her preoperative level of libido. Therefore, before agreeing to any surgery, the plastic surgeon evaluates and considers the woman's mental health to determine if breast implants can positively affect her self esteem and sexual functioning. A mammoplasty procedure for the placement of breast implant devices has three purposes third and fourth generations. The operating room time of post-mastectomy breast reconstruction, and of breast augmentation surgery is determined by the procedure employed, the type of incisions, the breast implant, and the pectoral locale of the implant pocket. Fifth Generation Recent research has indicated that mammograms should not be done with any increased frequency than used in normal procedure in patients undergoing breast surgery, including breast implant, augmentation, mastopexy, and breast reduction. The first technological developments were a thinner gauge device shell, and a filler gel of low cohesion silicone which improved the functionality and the verisimilitude of the silicone gel breast implant. Yet, in clinical practice, second-generation breast implants proved fragile, and suffered greater incidences of shell rupture, and of filler leakage through the intact device shell. The consequent, increased incidence rates of medical complications precipitated faulty product, class action lawsuits by the U.S. government, against the Dow Corning Corporation, and other manufacturers of breast prostheses, the second technological development was a polyurethane foam coating for the shell of the breast implant, the coating reduced the incidence of capsular contracture, by causing an inflammatory reaction that impeded the formation of a capsule of fibrous collagen tissue. Around the breast implant Nevertheless, despite that prophylactic measure, the medical use of polyurethane-coated breast implants was briefly discontinued, because of the potential health risk posed by 2,4-toluene diamine, a carcinogenic byproduct of the chemical breakdown of the polyurethane foam coating of the breast implant. Breast implant emplacement is performed with five types of surgical incisions. The four surgical approaches to emplacing a breast implant to the implant pocket are described in anatomical relation to the pectoralis major muscle. Damage during implantation, damage during surgical procedures, chemical degradation of the breast implant shell, trauma, mechanical pressure of traditional mammographic breast examination. The surgical scars of a breast augmentation mammoplasty develop approximately at six weeks post-operative, and fade within months. Depending upon the daily life physical activities required of the woman, the breast augmentation patient usually resumes her normal life at one week post-operative. Moreover, women whose breast implants were emplaced beneath the chest muscles usually have a longer, slightly more painful convalescence, because of the healing of the incisions to the chest muscles. Usually, she does not exercise or engage in strenuous physical activities for approximately six weeks. During the initial post-operative recovery, the woman is encouraged to regularly exercise her arm to alleviate pain and discomfort, if required. Analgesic and dwelling medication catheters can alleviate pain moreover, significantly improved patient recovery has resulted from refined breast device implantation techniques that allow 95% of women to resume their normal lives at 24 hours post-procedure, without bandages, fluid drains, pain pumps, catheters, medical support braziers, or Narcotic Pain Medication
Psychology Surgical Procedures Indications Incision Types The plastic surgical emplacement of breast implant devices, either for breast reconstruction or for aesthetic purpose, presents the same health risks common to surgery, such as adverse reaction to anesthesia, hematoma, late hematoma, seroma, incision site breakdown. Complications specific to breast augmentation include breast pain, altered sensation, impeded breast feeding function, visible wrinkling, asymmetry, thinning of the breast tissue, and semascha, the bread loafing of the bust that interrupts the natural plane between the breasts. Specific treatments for the complications of indwelling breast implants Capsular contracture and capsular rupture are periodic MRI monitoring and physical examinations. Furthermore, complications and reoperations related to the implantation surgery, and to tissue expanders can cause unfavorable scarring in approximately 6-7% of the patients. Statistically, 20% of women who underwent cosmetic implantation, and 50% of women who underwent breast reconstruction implantation, required their explantation at the 10-year mark. In 1997, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services appointed the Institute of Medicine of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences to investigate the potential risks of operative and post-operative complications from the emplacement of silicone breast implants. The IOM's review of the safety and efficacy of silicone gel-filled breast implants, reported that the evidence suggests diseases or conditions, such as connective tissue diseases, cancer, neurological diseases, or other systemic complaints or conditions are no more common in women with breast implants, than in women without implants. Subsequent studies and systemic review found no causal link between silicone breast implants and disease. Because a breast implant is a class 3 medical device of limited product life, the principal rupture rate factors are its age and design, nonetheless, a breast implant device can retain its mechanical integrity for decades in a woman's body. When a saline breast implant ruptures, leaks, and empties, it quickly deflates, and thus can be readily explanted. The follow-up report, Natrel Saline-Filled Breast Implants, a prospective 10-year study indicated rupture deflation rates of 3-5% at 3 years post-implantation, and 7-10% rupture deflation rates at 10 years post-implantation. When a silicone breast implant ruptures it usually does not deflate, yet the filler gel does leak from it, which can migrate to the implant pocket, therefore, an intracapsular rupture can become an extracapsular rupture, and each occurrence is resolved by explantation. Although the leaked silicone filler gel can migrate from the chest tissues to elsewhere in the woman's body, most clinical complications are limited to the breast and armpit areas, usually manifested as granulomas and axillary lymphadenopathy. The suspected mechanisms of breast implant rupture are Silicone implant rupture can be evaluated using magnetic resonance imaging, from the long-term MRI data for single lumen breast implants, the European literature about second-generation silicone gel breast implants, reported silent device rupture rates of 8-15% at 10 years post-implantation. The study safety and effectiveness of mentors memory gel implants at six years, which was a branch study of the US FDA's core clinical trials for primary breast augmentation surgery patients, reported low device rupture rates of 1.1% at six years post-implantation. The first series of MRI evaluations of the silicone breast implants with thick filler gel reported a device rupture rate of 1.0%, 
or less, at the median six-year device age. Statistically, the manual examination of the woman is inadequate for accurately evaluating if a breast implant has ruptured. The study, the diagnosis of silicone breast implant rupture, clinical findings compared with findings at magnetic resonance imaging, reported that, in asymptomatic patients, only 30% of the ruptured breast implants are accurately palpated and detected by an experienced plastic surgeon, whereas MRI examinations accurately detected 86% of breast implant ruptures. Therefore, the US FDA recommended scheduled MRI examinations, as silent rupture screenings, beginning at the three-year mark post-implantation, and then every two years, thereafter. Nonetheless, beyond the US, the medical establishments of other nations have not endorsed routine MRI screening, and, in its stead, proposed that such a radiologic examination be reserved for two purposes, for the woman with a suspected breast implant rupture, and for the confirmation of mammographic and ultrasonic studies that indicate the presence of a ruptured breast implant. Furthermore, the effect of study design biases on the diagnostic accuracy of magnetic resonance imaging for detecting silicone breast implant ruptures, a meta-analysis reported that the breast screening MRIs of asymptomatic women might overestimate the incidence of breast implant rupture. In the event, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration emphasized that breast implants are not lifetime devices. The longer a woman has silicone gel-filled breast implants, the more likely she is to experience complications. Implant Pocket Placement The human body's immune response to a surgically installed foreign object breast implant, cardiac pacemaker, Orthopedic prosthesis is to encapsulate it with scar tissue capsules of tightly woven collagen fibers, in order to maintain the integrity of the body by isolating the foreign object, and so tolerate its presence. Capsular contracture which should be distinguished from normal capsular tissue occurs when the collagen fiber capsule thickens and compresses the breast implant. It is a painful complication that might distort either the breast implant, or the breast, or both. The cause of capsular contracture is unknown, but the common incidence factors include bacterial contamination, device shell rupture, filler leakage, and hematoma. The surgical implantation procedures that have reduced the incidence of capsular contracture include submuscular emplacement, the use of breast implants with a textured surface, limited preoperative handling of the implants, limited contact with the chest skin of the implant pocket before the emplacement of the breast implant, and irrigation of the recipient site with triple antibiotic solutions. The correction of capsular contracture might require an open capsulotomy of the collagen fiber capsule, or the removal and possible replacement, of the breast implant. Furthermore, in treating capsular contracture, the closed capsulotomy once was a common maneuver for treating hard capsules, but now is a discouraged technique, because it can rupture the breast implant. Non-surgical treatments for collagen fiber capsules include massage, external ultrasonic therapy, Leukotriene pathway inhibitors such as Zephyrlocust or Montelukast, and pulsed electromagnetic field therapy. Post surgical recovery Complications Implant rupture When the patient is unsatisfied with the outcome of the augmentation mammoplasty, or when technical or medical complications occur, or because of the breast implant's limited product life, it is likely she might require replacing the breast implants. Common revision surgery indications include major and minor medical complications, capsular contracture, shell rupture, and device deflation. 
revision incidence rates were greater for breast reconstruction patients, because of the post-mastectomy changes to the soft tissues and to the skin envelope of the breast, and to the anatomical borders of the breast, especially in women who received adjuvant external radiation therapy. Moreover, besides breast reconstruction, breast cancer patients usually undergo revision surgery of the nipple areola complex, and symmetry procedures upon the opposite breast, to create a bust of natural appearance, size, form, and feel. Carefully matching the type and size of the breast implants to the patient's pectoral soft tissue characteristics reduces the incidence of revision surgery. Appropriate tissue matching, implant selection, and proper implantation technique, the reoperation rate was 3.0% at the 7 year mark, compared with the reoperation rate of 20% at the 3 year mark, as reported by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Many women with breast implants have reported connective tissue diseases such as systemic sclerosis systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, and fibromyalgia. Various other systemic symptoms have been evidenced at large and fall under the term breast implant illness. Symptoms include extreme fatigue, cognitive dysfunction, joint and muscle pain, dryness throughout the body, hair loss, tingling and numbness in the extremities, recurring infections, endocrine problems, and more. Platinum is used in the production of silicone gel for breast implants and small amounts may leach into surrounding tissues. Dr. Ernest Likhissa and Dr. Susan Maharaj did research on silicone breast implants and platinum. In their analytical chemistry paper, which is a top journal of the field, they reported finding the highest platinum to date in women who had implants. They also found that the platinum is transformed into an oxidized state which is more harmful. The FDA has identified that breast implants may be associated with a rare form of cancer called anaplastic large cell lymphoma, believed to be associated with chronic bacterial inflammation. Similar ALCL phenomena have been seen with other types of medical implants including vascular access ports, orthopedic hip implants, and jaw implants. As of February 1, 2017, the FDA has received a total of 359 medical device reports of breast implant-associated ALCL, including nine deaths. Most cases of breast implant-associated ALCL had implants in for many years prior to the condition, and are usually treated successfully by simple removal of the implant and the capsule surrounding the implant without the need for chemotherapy if no evidence of systemic disease exists. If women with implants present with delayed swelling or fluid collection, cytologic studies, and tests for a marker CD30 are suggested. The American Society of Plastic Surgery states, CD30 is the main diagnostic test that must be performed on the seroma fluid as routine pathology or HNE staining can frequently miss the diagnosis. Diagnosis and treatment of breast implant-associated ALCL now follows standardized guidelines established by the National Comprehensive Cancer Network. The current lifetime risk of BIAALCL in the U.S. is unknown, but estimates have ranged between estimated to be between 1 in 70,000 to 1 in 500,000 women with breast implants according to M.D. Anderson. Certain geographic locations have demonstrated variable risks. For instance, a December 2016 update from the Therapeutic Goods Administration of Australia and New Zealand reported a risk of 1 colon 1 comma 0 0 0 to 1 colon 10 comma 0 0 0 for textured implants. To date, 
there has not been a case of BIAL reported where the patient had only implantation of smooth shell breast implants or a textured tissue expander that was exchanged for a smooth implant. The paucity of cases reported in Asian populations has raised the possibility that there may be a range of genetic susceptibility to the phenomena or alternatively merely reflect differences in how cases are identified and reported. Capsular Contracture The ASPS and the Plastic Surgery Foundation have partnered with the FDA to study this condition and in doing so created the patient registry and outcomes for breast implants and anaplastic large cell lymphoma etiology and epidemiology. The United States FDA strongly encourages all physicians to report cases to profile in an effort to better understand the role of breast implants in ALCL and the management of this disease. Digestive contamination and systemic toxicity are the principal infant health concerns, the leakage of breast implant filler to the breast milk, and if the filler is dangerous to the nursing infant. Breast implant device fillers are biologically inert saline filler is salt water, and silicone filler is indigestible because each substance is chemically inert, and environmentally common. Moreover, proponent physicians have said there should be no absolute contraindication to breastfeeding by women with silicone breast implants. In the early 1990s, at the beginning of the silicone breast implant sickness occurrences, small-scale, non-random studies indicated possible breastfeeding complications from silicone implants, yet no study reported device disease causality. Women with breast implants may have functional breastfeeding difficulties. Mammoplasty procedures that feature periareolar incisions are especially likely to cause breastfeeding difficulties. Surgery may also damage the lactiferous ducts and the nerves in the nipple areola area. Functional breastfeeding difficulties arise if the surgeon cut the milk ducts or the major nerves innervating the breast, or if the milk glands were otherwise damaged. Milk duct and nerve damage are more common if the incisions cut tissue near the nipple. The milk glands are most likely to be affected by subglandular implants, and by large-sized breast implants, which pinch the lactiferous ducts and impede milk flow. Small-sized breast implants, and submuscular implantation, cause fewer breast function problems, however. It is impossible to predict whether a woman who undergoes breast augmentation will be able to successfully breastfeed since some women are able to breastfeed after periareolar incisions and subglandular placement and some are not able to after augmentation using submuscular and other types of surgical incisions. The presence of radiologically opaque breast implants might interfere with the radiographic sensitivity of the mammograph that is, the image might not show any tumor present. In which case, an Eklund view mammogram is required to ascertain either the presence or the absence of a cancerous tumor, wherein the breast implant is manually displaced against the chest wall and the breast is pulled forward, so that the mammograph can visualize a greater volume of the internal tissues, nonetheless. Approximately one-third of the breast tissue remains inadequately visualized, resulting in an increased incidence of mammograms with false negative results. The Breast Cancer Studies Cancer in the Augmented Breast, Diagnosis and Prognosis and Breast Cancer After Augmentation Mammoplasty of Women with Breast Implant Prostheses reported no significant differences in disease stage at the time of the diagnosis of cancer. Prognoses are similar in both groups of women, with augmented patients at a lower risk for subsequent cancer recurrence or death. Conversely, the use of implants for breast reconstruction after breast cancer mastectomy appears to have no negative effect upon the incidence of cancer-related death.
that patients with breast implants are more often diagnosed with palpable but not larger tumors indicates that equal-sized tumors might be more readily palpated in augmented patients, which might compensate for the impaired mammogram images. The ready palpability of the breast cancer tumor is consequent to breast tissue thinning by compression, innately in smaller breasts a priori, and that the implant serves as a radio-opaque base against which a cancerous tumor can be differentiated. The breast implant has no clinical bearing upon lumpectomy breast conservation surgery for women who developed breast cancer after the implantation procedure, nor does the breast implant interfere with external beam radiation treatments, moreover, the post-treatment incidence of breast tissue fibrosis is common and thus a consequent increased rate of capsular contracture. The study Breast Cancer Detection and Survival Among Women with Cosmetic Breast Implants, Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Observational Studies, reported a significant delay in the diagnoses of women who developed breast cancer after undergoing breast augmentation when compared to breast cancer patients who had not undergone breast augmentation. The metadata study breast implants following mastectomy in women with early-stage breast cancer, prevalence and impact on survival reported that breast augmentation patients were statistically likelier to die from breast cancer. Although the use of implants for breast reconstruction after breast cancer mastectomy appears to have no negative effect upon the incidence of cancer-related death, Women who underwent a mastectomy procedure tend to die earlier than women who underwent a lumpectomy procedure, with like diagnoses. In 1988, 26 years after the 1962 introduction of breast implants filled with silicone gel, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration investigated breast implant failures and the subsequent complications and reclassified breast implant devices as Class III medical devices, and required from manufacturers the documentary data substantiating the safety and efficacy of their breast implant devices. In 1992, the FDA placed silicone gel breast implants in moratorium in the U.S., because there was inadequate information to demonstrate that breast implants were safe and effective. Nonetheless, medical access to silicone gel breast implant devices continued for clinical studies of post-mastectomy breast reconstruction, the correction of congenital deformities, and the replacement of ruptured silicone gel implants. The FDA required from the manufacturers the clinical trial data, and permitted their providing breast implants to the breast augmentation patients for the statistical studies required by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. In mid-1992, the FDA approved an adjunct study protocol for silicone gel-filled implants for breast reconstruction patients, and for revision surgery patients. Also in 1992, the Dow Corning Corporation, a silicone products and breast implant manufacturer, announced the discontinuation of five implant-grade silicones, but would continue producing 45 other, medical-grade, silicone materials three years later. In 1995, the Dow Corning Corporation went bankrupt when it faced large class-action lawsuits claiming a variety of illnesses. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration established the age ranges for women seeking breast implants, for breast reconstruction, silicone gel-filled implants and saline-filled implants were approved for women of all ages, for breast augmentation, saline implants were approved for women 18 years of age and older, silicone implants were approved for women 22 years of age and older. Because each breast implant device entails different medical risks, the minimum age of the patient for saline breast implants is different from the minimum age of the patient for silicone breast implants because of the filler leakage and silent shell rupture risks. Thus, P. 
periodic MRI screening examinations are the recommended post-operative, follow-up therapy for the patient. In other countries, in Europe and Oceania, the National Health Ministry's breast implant policies do not endorse periodic MRI screening of asymptomatic patients, but suggest palpation proper with or without an ultrasonic screening to be sufficient post-operative therapy for most patients. In the early 1990s, the National Health Ministries of the listed countries reviewed the pertinent studies for causal links among silicone gel breast implants and systemic and autoimmune diseases. The collective conclusion is that there is no evidence establishing a causal connection between the implantation of silicone breast implants and either type of disease. The Danish study Long-Term Health Status of Danish Women with Silicone Breast Implants reported that women who had breast implants for an average of 19 years were no more likely to report an excessive number of rheumatic disease symptoms than would the women of the control group. The follow-up study Mortality Rates Among Augmentation Mammoplasty Patients an update reported a decreased standardized mortality ratio and an increased risk of lung cancer death among breast implant patients, than among patients for other types of plastic surgery, the mortality rate differences were attributed to tobacco smoking. The study mortality among Canadian women with cosmetic breast implants, about some 25,000 women with breast implants, reported a 43 percenter lower rate of breast cancer among them than among the general populace, and a lower than average risk of cancer. Repair and Revision Surgeries Systemic Illness and ALCL Cancer English Translation we did not observe connective tissue diseases to be directly or indirectly associated by the presence of a breast implant, in particular one of silicone gel. Systemic disease and sickness. Platinum toxicity. Anaplastic large cell lymphoma. Implants and breastfeeding. Implants and mammography. US FDA approval. Safety of breast implants.